Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden. And today we're gonna be potting up a ton of seedlings that have outgrown their seed cells. And we're gonna be starting several different varieties of snapdragons from seed. Okay, so it is the time of the year where I need to start potting up. So a lot of my seedlings, things I've started for my fall garden, they have outgrown their space. So we need to move them up to a larger container. Okay, for example, <laughs> these right here are all the petunias that I've been growing for my fall garden. And you can see they're blooming. They're doing really, really well, and it, they have definitely outgrown their space. So let's talk about what potting up is. So basically potting up is taking a seedling or plant and moving it to a larger container. There's a lot of different reasons you do that. One of the first reasons you do that is um, if it's not time to plant your seedlings directly out into the garden, right? It's a little too hot right now. I don't plan on planting mine out until probably mid-September to the end of September. And so I need to put these in a larger container so they can continue to grow both fuller and larger. You also wanna start, when your plants start getting this large, it's hard for them to get enough nutrients because their roots are just taking up so much of the soil. So we wanna pot them up into a larger container so that we can fertilizer or a bit easier for them to fertilize and more space for the roots to spread out. So there's a few things that you want to look out for when trying to decide if it's time to pot up your seedlings to a larger container or not. Um, one of the first things you're looking for is how often do they need to be watered? If they need to constantly be watered, they're drying out really fast, then that is definitely a sign that they need to be potted up. And these are having to be watered every two days, which is definitely too fast. Now, one of the other ones is basically height of the plants. So this is probably gonna drip a little bit. Once the height of the plants gets taller than the seed cell that they started in, it's definitely another time um, to go ahead and uh, repot them. Also, we're looking for circling roots. When the root starts to circle inside the seed cell, that's also a sign that we need to pot them up to the next level. You're also looking for things like yellowing leaves. Let me see if I can find something that shows the yellowing leaves. We're not quite there on some of these some of these petunias do have a little bit of yellowing leaves in some places that's a sign of deficiency nutrient deficiency which is also a good sign that it's time to plant these up to the next container and then if you're watching your seedlings and like me i check on them every day if you feel like they've kind of slowed down on the growth process that's also typically another sign that you need to pot them up into larger containers okay so how do we go about potting stuff up it's super simple you all we're basically just gonna take these little seedlings and we're gonna be putting them into larger four inch by four inch containers. You go grab some of those. Okay, so we're basically just gonna take these three inch, four inch um, nursery containers and I just save these whenever I'm purchasing any kind of annuals or anything like that and reuse them. I'm refilling them with my favorite potting soil which is Bee Burger BM7 and we're going to just basically be taking these little, um, little seedlings and tucking them in and that's pretty much it. So let me show you what that looks like. All right, so we need quite a bit of soil to start off with. Now, I'm not gonna add a fertilizer, a granule of fertilizer to these um, to start off with, just because um, I like to um, fertilize my seedlings with Alaskan fish emulsion, and I do that in the liquid form. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull out my little seedling. Now, I am gonna go ahead and pull out um, some of the blooms, because we really don't want it spending a lot of time making blooms. We really wanted to let it spend time working on roots. And then I'm just gonna tuck my seedling in, add some soil, tuck it down, and we're good to go. So I need to do a ton of these. So I'm gonna start with just all the petunias, and then I'll show you what the next one we're potting up, which is the coleus, how those look. Okay, this is Arthur, my friend's puppy dog. Go on, Arthur. Okay, so these are trays of petunias and then also two additional trays of petunias. So almost four full trays of petunias, 18 in each tray. 
Next, we're going to move on to coleus. Let me pull that out and we'll get started on that. Okay, so we have lots of gorgeous coleus. Um, and it's mostly the Kong coleus, which I love, which is like a really big leafed coleus. Look how beautiful this absolutely is. Um, this particular variety is rose. And so obviously none of these are flowering, so I don't have to worry about pinching them back, but I do, I'm going to up pot them, pot them up into um, new containers. So I have three varieties of con coleus, and then I have um, some uh, chocolate mint coleus that's a smaller leaf coleus, but I'll um, pot that up as well. Okay, and with the coleus, it's just going to be the same process again. Let me pull out one of these gorgeous seedlings for you to see. Absolutely beautiful. They don't need to be pinched or anything at this point. Still looking really, really good. And we'll just pop it into the container. And there we go. Go ahead and get these all planted up. Okay, so it is actually the next day. <laughs> so we are going to go ahead and start some snapdragons from seed. Now, snapdragons, I have, once I figured out the process, they've been very easy to grow. I start them during the summer. I plant them out in the fall. They overwinter, and then I have lots of beautiful blooms in the spring. Now, I do find that while a lot of my snapdragons, my snapdragon plants might last multiple years, they die at random times sometimes. So I was actually looking out there before I started some, and I definitely have at least 12 that have just gone kaput. I don't know if those are first, second, or third, even third year plants, but I do start snapdragons every year to replace um, some. And then of course, I'll just be giving some to Kristen as well. Um, so, but doing by doing it that way, I find that I get a more robust um, uh, uh, blooming cycle with the snapdragons in the spring instead of starting them during the winter, um, uh, during the winter time and then planting them out in the spring. By starting them now, allowing them to grow a great root system throughout the fall and into the winter, then come spring, I'm getting tons of blooms off of each plant. So let's kind of talk a little bit through that process. Now, I have had my snapdragons um, in, I actually threw them in the freezer for just a couple of days, just to kind of simulate a little bit of a cold snap for them. I didn't do cold stratification, meaning like got them wet and then put them in there. I literally just threw them in um, the freezer. And um, they are tiny, tiny, tiny seeds. They're all surface zones. So they do need light in order to germinate. They do not need, um, they need to be about 65 degrees for germination, which that's typically about my house. So I do not need to put like a heating pad underneath any of them or anything like that. And they do take about 10 to 14 days um, to germinate. So let's go ahead and get some of those started. And um, I'm also tell you about the varieties I'm starting. So basically I'm just coming over here with my favorite Amazon seed starting trays. And I'm coming across with my Burger BM7 soil, making sure I am breaking down any clumps then just go in and slightly press down with them just like that super simple and easy and we're going to start quite a few trays okay i'm thinking i'm going to start a couple of rounds um, of snapdragons because this is a lot of different varieties to start and i think i'm going to need one of those larger hexagonal um, trays that like what i did for my lysianthus to start a bunch for Kristen as well. So I think today I'm going to start, um, yeah, I've got a few that I'm going to try um, and work with. So basically these seeds are super, super tiny, literally look like dust. Let me bring y'all in closer. Um, yeah, they literally look like dust. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a little bit of sprinkle and I probably am getting two to three in each one. You can go through with a toothpick and space it out to have some on each, but I don't have the patience for that. So I'm not going to do that. And then at this point, notice that I've got this dry soil method, right? Now I can come down and because the soil is not wet, 
can easily go down and press these into the soil to make sure they have great contact but I don't have to like worry about them sticking to my fingers so we're good to go on that once I've done that I need to put it in a container and fill it with water so you fill the container up about halfway then go ahead and set this on there and because these seeds are so small and can dry out so quickly, I am going to be adding some vermiculite across the top just to help with moisture retention. I don't want to go too heavy because remember these do need a light for germination. And then at that point, we'll just put a um, community dome on the top, making sure the community dome is close. Obviously, I'm going to label this. But let's go ahead and go through and get a bunch of these started and I'll talk about the different varieties while I'm getting these started. Okay, the first is Madame Butterfly Bronze, and I have grown all of these before. This is a beautiful saturated color that kind of has an ombre effect, about 26 to 36 inches tall, and this is a later in the season um, bloom. All right, this next one is a classic Chantilly White, really frilly with a little bit of touch of yellow in the center, about 28 to 36 inches tall, a very romantic kind of whimsical look to it. This next variety is Costa Summer Lavender, perhaps my favorite. It kind of looks a little pink, but a little lavender at the same time. This is a group three, so a little bit later in the season and about 40 to 60 inches tall. Absolutely gorgeous. Next variety is Costa Apricot. It has a lot of creaminess um, to these peach tones and it's an earlier season one at group two and only about 28 to 36 inches tall. This next one is a Madame Butterfly bron uh, Bronze with white. I do like this one. I didn't have as much luck with it um, blooming quite profusely. It is um, a group three, four and about 26 to 36 inches tall. This next variety is Potomac Lavender and this one's definitely a workhorse and produces a lot of blooms that are from lavender to a pink tone. It is a group three, four, and it's about 40 to 60 inches tall. Now this next variety I would definitely call more of like a magenta fuchsia color, very bold and bright Potomac Royal. And it is a group three, four at about 40 to 60 inches tall. And it is just a beautiful, bold color. This variety is Chantilly Light Salmon, very frilly. Definitely has like a vintage vibe to it. Um, and it definitely has an ombre effect with its colors. It's about uh, 28 to 36 inches tall and group one and two. Okay, I did go pick up a couple of larger trays to do um, Kristen's stuff and all this out of the way. These are 72. Just easier than doing the um, a bunch of the smaller trees for her. Okay, and I did get some additional lights so I can set up the very bottom um, of this um, new light setup I have over here. But let's go ahead and let me just show you what's going on with some of the other seedlings. Okay, so I do have another set of lights that I'll add right here so I can put those extra trays there. We have um, all of the pansies going well, echinacea doing really well, um, some lisianthus. Um, this one didn't do as well. These echo pink and echo whites were a little bit older seeds, but looking really good. And of course, all of the celosia we just potted up have some zinnias. Remember, my zinnias didn't do super great, but I do still have some. And I have all the dichondras doing good, more um, um more coleus back there. Did I say celosia or say coleus? That's supposed to be coleus. More violas and pansies back here. Um, up here is all the pan, uh, the petunias that we just repotted. And then up here is a ton more lisianthus that are doing just really beautiful, really, really well. Then over here is my delphinium. I had some trays that were not so great. And then I had some trays that were spectacular. Like, look at these 
And remember, these are all the ones that I um, harvested myself. So all those seeds are mine, which is very exciting. Hundred, I think probably at least 70 plants, which will be great. Then over here is my, um, let's see, these are, what I'm trying to say, foxglove. And you see I heavily seeded, <laughs> and look at all those little baby ones coming up. Tons and tons and tons on those. Now, I did not as heavily seed on like this Dalmatian peach. These were some older, um, older seeds. And then this guy over here, which is Camelot Rose, which is also older seed. I don't really see much coming out here. But the ones that I um, did myself, you can see, let's see, you can see all the little bitty guys coming up super exciting so those are all harvested um, from plants that i grew this past year and then of course all of these are all of the snapdragons that i just did and these two trays and then down here let me get down here these are all the ornamental millet they're doing beautifully i've been using those bamboo skewers to support them which has been great and then of course we've got um, tons these are all marigolds back there are doing beautifully they were potted up a few weeks ago and then I've got my um, mom's cuttings here. And then over here are all of the begonias that I started. Um, this guy's fallen over. I probably should cut him, <laughs> trim him up a little bit. Um, these are all the begonias I started. I believe I got them from Johnny's or Bl oh, Bluestone Perennials. So these are all the tubers I started, which are all looking really good. Okay, so let's wrap up. Ooh. These Jiffy trays are not very strong. Okay, let's wrap up a little bit with the Snapdragon. So Snapdragons actually have four different groups. The groups are based on when the flower grows best, either shorter days, cooler temps, longer days, warmer temps. It just really depends. So there's four main groups, all dependent on the day length and temps. So in group number one is low light and low heat. Group number two is moderate light and moderate heat. Group number three is kind of a mix of two and three, but mostly high light, high heat. And group number four is high light, high heat as well. Now with these groups, it really doesn't matter in my area. This, since I don't grow cut flowers to sell, that these groups don't really bother me at all because they're really the expanse of them is like two weeks. Um, <laughs> so the time difference between these is a couple of weeks. However, if you're a cut flower grower, I could see that these groups are super important for you because a matter of a weeks is a product, right? That's being able to sell different products. And so for me, this works really really good just to just go for it i don't even stress about the groups whatsoever now um i love snapdragons because they're really great line flowers so tall and long and lean they come in a t several different colors great for bou um, bouquets and they have excellent vase life cons they are a little tricky to start from seed it has taken me a few years to really kind of understand the process of what works best for me for snapdragons. So the process you just saw is what works best for me and what gets me the highest germination rates. I will say storing them in the refrigerator or in the um, freezer for several weeks really helps on the amount of germination, the higher germination point, um, which a percentage, which works really good. Um, they're hard to find as transplants. So you can typically find like the shorter varieties um, to be just used for your landscape beds, but finding the taller varieties for transplanting um, is just not really a thing in the nursery world. And they do not like the heat. So typically what I do is this year, I once my snapdragons were really stopped blooming and producing blooms, I went ahead and just planted uh, zinnia seeds throughout that mix so that that bed wouldn't just be nothing for several months. So I don't know if that's gonna help shade out the Snapdragon plants so that they will be able to easily overwinter, I, I, or not overwinter, make it through the summer. I don't know, I'll be sure to update y'all that. Um, right now from what I can see, at least half of them are gone. So perhaps that didn't work very well. <laughs> but 
we'll see. We'll get it figured out. And I will continue to update you all. We are well on our way to having a lot of beautiful plants for my fall gardens, which I'm really, really excited about. And we are well on our way to having a lot of flowers that we're going to be planting out in late fall that will overwinter and then produce beautiful spring blooms for us. I'm really looking forward to that. If you haven't started that process, there's still time, um, especially if you're in my particular area, we still have time. So just check out some of my videos and some of the different cut flowers and plants that I have started from seed in the last month or so. All right, you all, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, getting to watch me um, basically get potting up a whole bunch of stuff for my fall garden, getting them just holding on a little bit longer because we're only about maybe four to six weeks away from starting to plant all that out for the fall gardens. Very exciting. And seeing me start a ton of snapdragons from seed. Those will be planting out in fall, overwintering, and then they'll be ready to go for the spring. All right, you all, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it helps grow the channel so much. And if you are not into leaving a comment, just drop an emoji below for me. Um, I like that. I think it makes it a lot easier for people who like don't know what to say. So try out that emoji. And be sure to check me out on my social media outlets, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.